Well, indeed, the Birmingham boys are as about as active as a blade of grass at the moment and not one that's blowing in the wind either. These guys are fast, fast asleep. So you can see there's one there and there's the other one. So that's two of them that are completely sleeping. Now, I'm not sure which two those are. I think I've got Tinyo closest to me and then it looks like Mfumo and either Neno and Suko are away from us. But that lion there is so fast asleep, he almost looks as though he is not alive. The way that his lips have fallen down, <laughs> it looks like he's kind of gone on to the next life. But there we go. That's a very, very sleepy Birmingham. Now you can see that his chest is moving, so please don't worry. He is not sick in any way and he's not dying. He's just fast asleep. And this is what happens when you digest a buffalo, is that you end up on your back with your um, legs open and your head flopped down and in a sort of comatose state of sleep and basically just trying to digest whatever you've eaten for the day. Now, the two over there are also fast asleep and I haven't seen either one of them even lift their head when any vehicle has approached. So it's all very sedate at this stage, but I'm hoping that they will wake up at some point as it starts to cool off and tonight's going to get dark very early. So hopefully they will decide to wake up a little bit and we'll actually get to see some of their beautiful faces. Now, I wonder if this is not full more closer to me. I can't say for sure at this stage. So Bobby, you say lol, typical cats. Well, yes, particularly on a Sunday afternoon in cloudy, overcast, windy weather, it is about as good as it can be for a cat. It's really, really very, very sleepy indeed. And it's interesting just to see where they've chosen to lie today. I'm quite surprised that they've walked as far as they did. And they've left an area where there was water. So if you think earlier, they were on those buffalo kills down in Mala Mala, and there was water right there. But yet they've come all the way up here to Cheetah Plains Pan and decided to rest right out in the open. And it's a strange situation. I'm surprised, like I said, that they walked that much during the day because we know James was with them and they were sort of sleeping. And it's only now, in the, during the morning, that they decided to start walking northwards. And they've then plonked themselves down here. And I think this is where they're going to remain for most of the afternoon. What will be interesting is to see where they go from here and whether or not the fourth Birmingham male arrives or if they call towards him it'll be interesting to see if that happens and hopefully they'll be able to call before we leave this afternoon because we have to head back slightly earlier so hopefully they'll be awake but with these sort of overcast dark conditions that we've got currently it should be perfect for lions to be awake a little bit earlier because it's going to be dark much much earlier tonight so I'm hoping that we will get some sort of action out of them and we're not going to end up with the situation where we've got flat sleeping beauties for the rest of the afternoon. Well, CT, you say you get that way after eating at a buffet. Well, I can't agree more, especially on a Sunday. It's almost the perfect thing to do is to go and have a good Sunday afternoon nap after eating yourself silly. And so I agree wholeheartedly that that is the case. And these guys are doing it as probably as well as they possibly can. They are definitely champion sleepers at this stage. Now you'll notice that his back leg is sort of up and splayed and that's all just to help with the sort of opening of the legs, keeping the body cool because even though it is a cool afternoon, the body is still generating a massive amount of metabolic heat by trying to digest all of that protein that's inside of them. Also, it's probably just a little bit more comfortable than lying on your side all day long. So that's why you see those legs sort of sticking up on the edge there. But if it wasn't for the fact that he was breathing, he honestly does look as though he may be dead. <laughs> not, a, not a good look at all. And like I said, I'm not sure which one is which at this stage. Their heads are so buried in the grass at the moment, it's difficult to make any sort of ID on any of them. But it looks like the one closest to us could be Tinyo and Fumo. They've got quite dark manes and lots of scarring on the nose. So Jenny, you're wondering if any of the cats are suffering from canine distemper in South Africa because there are some that are suffering in East Africa. Well, Jenny, not that I've heard of. Um, I suppose it is possible, but I haven't heard of any of the lions in the Sabi Sands or leopards in the Sabi Sands getting canine distemper at this stage, but I suppose it is possible. 
Now, the Sands pack that Jamie is with, they are showing signs of it, and there's the sort of vets that are checking them out and seeing how they are and monitoring them. So let's just see how that goes. But it, it would be interesting to know if it can cross over and if there has been any reported cases in this area. It's not to my knowledge, I haven't heard of it in this particular section, but it's not to say that it can't happen. But you can see those paws have seen some wear and tear in their life. Can you imagine what those have gone through? Right. Well, our boys are very sleepy. They are not moving at all, but we are going to try and wait it out. Oh, wait, hold on. We've got some movement. Oh, look, stretch. Uh, and another bit of movement. It's all happening right now. This is exciting in the lion world when it's a Sunday afternoon. But no, there we go, back to sleeping again. So as I say, we're going to sit with them and try and see if they're not going to wake up. And it seems that it's been an absolutely incredible afternoon that has been predator-filled, that's for sure. But James has got something just to bring a little bit of delicateness to our lives.